Do you think Kamala is pushing right to split votes from Trump because she doesn't think she can activate non-voters on the left? This this is like it's re it's a really difficult topic for me to talk about because a lot of the people who talk about it are on the left and stupid about it. Right. There are like a bunch of these smarmy college age, you know, borderline Assadist Democrat non voters. But like, you know, oh, if the Democrats want to win my vote, they have to do X and Y. And then they say, OK, well, why isn't Kamala doing more to appeal to me? You were never going to be appealed to. All you do is complain. It's not a matter of whether you're right or wrong. OK, it's a matter of whether or not realistically like the loud, obnoxious sub 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 demographic of sub Twitter anxiety having mother who have read Lenin are going to be moved to vote for her for whatever she does. You'll never be satisfied by anything, okay? That being said, I have always believed that Democrats would have a lot more success appealing to left-leaning alienated voters or even people, because again, the myth of the, of the uncommitted voter is that they are a centrist. Nobody is a centrist. The only people who are centrists are actually right-leaning. If you talk to a median voter, a lot of these people are insane. If you talk to a median voter, they'll say they're not sure who they can vote for because they have some policies that would have like comfortably fit in Mussolini's cabinet and some policies that would have comfortably fit in like Lenin's cabinet. Like it's, they're inconsistencies that need to be appealed to. Being moderate doesn't get them. Being moderate doesn't get anyone. I mean, we've seen the evidence on this. There's no, like, magical pocket of undecided voters who are perfectly in the center who would be moved over to the left if only Kamala Harris could show she's just a little bit less left-leaning than, you know, they think. But then it's, it's stuff like this, man. Today, I am announcing that as president, I will create a bipartisan council of advisors to give feedback on policy and inform my administration. So who do I vote for? to not have Republicans in government then. Because if I, I vote for Republicans, we get Republicans. If I vote for Democrats, the Democrats are like, oh, well, it would be rude of us to win too hard. And then they appoint Republicans. You get, you know, oh, would I put a Republican in the cabinet position? Maybe. Who's swayed by this? No one is. I have yet to find any evidence. And I'm meaning when I've said this isn't, I'm not trying to be like rhetorical. I'm not trying to, to overplay the point for comedy's sake. I have yet to see any empirical evidence that that type of strategy works, that anyone is moved in a close race like this by the like, uh, oh, well, don't worry, you know, even if even if I win and Donald Trump loses, I'll still get some like dickless rhino motherfucker to uh, to to the, the to head the Department of Agriculture who is swayed by this. Yeah, Democrats are the ones who are too partisan. F you. I blame MSNBC for sucking off George Conway and the Lincoln Project all the time. The Lincoln Project has more balls than the Dems do, which is insane. The Lincoln Project is supposed to be the milk toast, anti-Trump, never Trump Republican types, but they're consistently more aggressive than the Democrats are. Isn't that embarrassing? Isn't it embarrassing that the so-called like moderates who were pulled from the party are actually more willing to be aggressive against them than you are? Doesn't that say anything about your messaging? Lincoln Pl uh, Project, they're just actual haters. They hate her post all day. And I love them for it. No, I, I don't. I, I don't like the Lincoln Project. I do like the hater posting, you know? I do like it. The Adams Ruins Everything guy pr brought up studies showing most Americans' views on immigration are incoherent. The Americans who said undocumented immigrants should be completely deported also think those same immigrants should be provided a path to citizenship. And I've said this too, probably with not as much factual backing as the Adams Ruin, Adam Ruins Everything guy. But I've said this too, which is people... There are no centrists. The only people who have ever considered themselves centrists are covert right-wing operatives in media positions who pretend to not be right-wing in order to sucker people into supporting them. There are no real centrists. No one actually believes that, you know?
In reality, people have wildly partisan beliefs that swing all over, and you have to appeal to them and energize them and motivate them. I bet you you could get a lot of the people who vote for Trump now to have voted for Bernie Sanders if he had made it into the general on the account of him being like a protectionist. Oh, he's pro-American worker. I bet you could get some of them. You know, probably a significant margin of them, a lot of Latin voters as well. I bet you he could have spoken to them in a way that uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris can't. And by the way, the fact that there's not more like Latin representation in the Democratic leadership is fucking crazy. When you consider how essential the Latin sw like swing vote is in so many like critical states, leave aside like New Mexico and Arizona, you could get Texas. Someone who appeals well to Latin voters, you could get Texas. But, you know, whatever. Dems hate Latin voters. Yeah, they do. Because they were all they were all pro-Latin voter up until Biden came in office. And then all of a sudden, all of the, you know, the inhumanity of our treatment of migrants, all that went out the fucking window. Like, like that. And all of a sudden, winning for the Democrats became, how can we be better at securing the border than Republicans? Which has now moved to the current point that we're in, where Democrats are objectively to the right of where they were before on the border. Like, Hillary Clinton had more progressive positions on the southern border than Democrats do today. That's not, like, conjecture. It's an objective fact. The far right anti-migrant uh, bill that Democrats bipartisanly put forward through the House and the Senate that Donald Trump had killed, like, the, yeah, the Overton window has moved very to the right on immigration. Democrats always do this. They never, they never attack the fundamental point. They never attack the premise. They concede the framework and then try to argue on its terms. George W. Bush had more progressive views on the border than the average Dem at this point? Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's because they don't have their own Fox News to blast the party line into public discourse. Then maybe they should? They do? Well, MSNBC isn't quite like Fox News at all, and CNN certainly isn't. I'm not even talking about, like, misinformation. I'm just talking about, isn't that what MSNBC is supposed to be? No. Them suck in messaging. I mean, they don't even use the bully pulpit. When was the last time you heard Biden speak? Yesterday? Okay, well... You're very special. God Dems marketing is such ass. It really is. Republicans have incredibly consistent messaging. The border is open. The country is falling due to non-white people. Uh, it's being destroyed by groomers, uh, uh, you know, files, uh, by migrant gangs. Everything is out to get you. Everyone's going to kill you. The only way to stop this is by having Donald Trump oust the corrupt, evil people in, in the White House take control of our government and enact a great deportation. Tens of millions of people forced out of the country, like in a gigantic purge. Their messaging is very consistent. And you know what? They're pretty good with it, aren't they? All their media uh, outlets, all their posters, Donald Trump himself, J.D. Vance, they're all very consistent in delivering not only the technical points of the message, but the emotional points of the message. But Democrat messaging is, and seemingly always will be, uh, things are fine, but we're going to make them better by appealing to the hearts of the American people. You know, we're going to use minor incremental improvements to our system. Oh, nothing too crazy. Wouldn't want to anger our donors. Minor incremental improvements to our system to slightly improve your life. And don't worry about all that other stuff, okay? It's hateful and divisive. And that's the most you get. That's the most you get from Dem messaging. And even then, it's often not consistent. You go, queen. You give us nothing. It is very focus grouped. But it's also not really possible for them to do any more than that without them doing one of two things. For one, they have to embrace populism, or for two, they have to be willing to lie. And, well, I mean, of course, Democrats do lie. They don't lie anywhere near as much as Republicans do, but they still do lie, particularly with, you know, Israel. But they lie on a very different level. And they can't do populism because that would anger the donors. Republicans can do economic populism, uh, like the 20% tariff thing, because business owners have mostly, like, bought into the bait at this point. It's kind of of like an unstoppable populist inertial wave getting Trump in at this point, and you have to appeal to stuff like that in order to win. Also, they don't think he'll actually do it. I miss the weekend Kamala was made the candidate and when they picked walls. Yeah, that was nice, wasn't it? But you know what happened since then? Kamala got 
the nomination from the Dems, which means that what used to be Kamala Harris's own campaign team got subsumed into the greater Democratic establishment. Hillary Clinton became a consultant. A bunch of Dem strategists, you know, these, these fucking old, out-of-touch, consultant-ass motherfuckers took control of the campaign because it's their resources now. It's not just Kamala Harris's campaign. It's not just her team. All the cool stuff that Kamala Harris did, all the interesting, engaging stuff, all the stuff that made it feel like things were going to be different, all the stuff that led to her getting a boost in poll numbers, those were at the beginning. Post-DNC, eh. I mean, it's pretty clear, man. Look at this. Oh, it won't show on 538 because 538 only starts with late July. I don't know why I'm looking for this. You all know perfectly well that Kamala Harris's favorability uh, went up and up leading into the DNC. And then you had that final peak. And since then, it's pretty much held steady. You know that. She isn't promising anything like what the hell building homes and a small business tax credit. No, 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 no. She's promising stuff. Don't, don't get it. Uh, don't get it twisted. She's promising to put a Republican uh, in her cabinet. Don't forget about that. She's going to have a bipartisan consultancy group to listen to. You know, don't forget about that. Why are they campaigning like this? Dems like losing. They barely say the we're not going back line that they used to. Yep, because that was Ka that was Kamala Harris's campaign team, not the DNC. By the way, the DNC, the Democrats, didn't like the we're not going back line. They didn't like the weird line either. We literally have evidence of this. The, uh, reports on how like Dem consultants didn't like those. So now that she's folded back in the DNC, she gets the DNC treatment. Dem advisors want to lose. No way, really. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find the exact um, article that I saw this from, but yeah, it's 100% true. You all remember seeing those articles, right? How they didn't like the weird messaging. They didn't like the we're not going back. I remember. Okay, well, that's good. We're not going back wasn't written to be a campaign catchphrase. Kamala Harris voters had other ideas. Man, isn't it cool? The idea of some, like something becoming a catchphrase, not even because a bunch of consultants came up with it, but rather because it just organically developed in a heated moment while talking to a crowd. Isn't that like, I don't know how this is supposed to work? No. You, uh, you, you can't keep doing that. The consultants haven't approved it. In pretty much every other modern presidential election cycle, by late July, the nominee has spent months, if not years, testing and refining messages. Messaging, which could involve crisscrossing snowy Iowa in the run-ups, the caucuses, assembling focus groups, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on polling, even debating rivals on stage. We had nothing, a Harris advisor said. No research. The team that hammered out Harris's Willington remarks replied in, relied instead on experience and instinct and crafted on the fly not simply a 19-minute speech, but what turned out to be a wildly successful messaging template for the first six weeks of an unprecedented campaign. Nope, time for the focus groups to have their say. Bring it back. We, we gotta go with the last banger that a consultant group came up with. I'm with her. Remember, I'm with her with, with uh, it, how about it's her turn? Yeah! It's her turn. That's great, man. People are going to love that. Why the weird label is working for Kamala Harris. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Campaign strategists say this new messaging appears to be cutting through with Democrat-leading voters because it makes voting for Ms. Harris sound like more of a common-sense choice and less like a civic chore. But it's too early to tell if this fresh goodwill for a vice president who, until recently, struggled to grab the attention of American voters will last until November's election day. I don't see anything saying, oh, you're saying it was cutting through the party, not that they didn't like it initially. Some political consultants marveled at the weird label's effectiveness. Yeah, because they're political consultants. Please, God, put me in charge of consultancy at the DNC. Me sitting in a smoky room full of 80-year-olds. Okay, listen. The voting base really wants you to call retarded and a pedophile. You, she has to do this. It's true, and they want it. Please tell him this. She needs to tell him this. The voters want this. I'm not kidding. Why will they not bring up Epstein? Because of Bill Clinton, I imagine. A lot of people got... A lot of people are roped up there. I love this BBC article. Is weird working with the voters? Multiple paragraphs indicating that it's working. Republican pollster Frank Luntz was more skeptical. On Newsnight on Tuesday, he, a Republican pollster said that the weird label is weird in itself and didn't resonate with voters. 
multiple paragraphs of his warbling. And then at the end, I think Democrats are the weird ones. So no, I don't think that's right to call Republicans weird. Thank you, BBC, for framing this person's opinion as though it matters. Um, many voters resonated positively with calling Trump a pedophile. To counter this point, we brought on, I don't know, Dershowitz. Dershowitz, how do you feel about this? Uh, well, you know, as a pedophile myself, I don't think that, uh, uh, that messaging works very well. What if some people like it, actually? Uh, I, anyway, I think that Democrats are the real pedophiles. Thank you, BBC. Here's my impression of a Democrat. I love losing. 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 Do you like it? It's, it's pretty good, right? Holy shit, that's so good. It's like spot on, right? Maybe we should have an I love losing emote. I don't want to do that so close to the actual election. I feel like that's a bit much. I feel like we're already, I don't know, bad omen. Bad juju. Hey, you know what else we haven't heard in a while? Not since the DNC. Project 2025. I mean, you see tweets about it. It's just, again, it doesn't even feel like they're running. For a while, it felt like Donald Trump wasn't running, but now he's like actually showing up pretty consistently. Uh, Tim Walls and Kamala Harris just aren't doing anything to capture the public's attention. You know, your stump speeches are just not much compared to Donald Trump threatening to implement the Fourth Reich. I feel like Walls is fighting back a little. Yeah, because the Walls pick was something um, that was done before the DNC. That's the only way. Like, Walls is like a holdover. He's vestigial. Sorry, old man. You're from when this campaign was effective and meant something. You're, you're out of touch. You're out of time. Kamala went on Univision. She's just not trying to appeal to the same voters she's already been trying to appeal to. She's going after the more minority majority. This is what they always f*** up on. You don't win by diversifying your rhetoric until you're trying to appeal to every like little sub community that your f***ing, your, 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 your pollsters and your analysts and your focus groups tell you to focus on. You have a strong message and you speak it strongly and that is how you get it. It's consultancy brain. It's like, oh, well, America is made up of like, you know, these 57 different like voting relevant demographics. So we need to hit something that'll get at least, you know, 28 of them, 29 of them. You win by having a strong unified message. Yeah, what, Trump keeps making gains in spite of Trump's had only one f***ing message for eight years. Hate, fear, immigrants. Yeah, Bernie Sanders did incredibly well with given the resources and uh, attention and power he had. And he had like basically one message. You don't need to like we, you're weakening yourself. It's energy and momentum that gets people into the voting booths, not like a, a, a vapid, insincere appeal to your sub demographic that given like two days before the election, because you're trying to like hit every mini group. Does, do you have. Do you have Kamala Harris saying that? On Univision? Do you have, like, the clip of that? Walls backs off comment that Electoral College should go. Yeah, sure, why not, man? Like, mo the majority of voters believe it, especially Democrats, but no, a lot of Republicans believe the opposite. So, nope, sorry, we don't have opinions anymore. My position is the campaign's position. What a what an admission that, like, nothing matters, like, everything is sublimated or, or subsumed by the, the, the campaign, you know? Walls' comment marks the latest instant of Democratic vice presidential nominee trying to clear up a previous remark he made in the campaign trail or of his long career in politics prior to joining the Harris campaign. Walls has faced scrutiny for previously misrepresenting his military rank. No, he didn't. He didn't misrepresent his military rank. He failed to file paperwork that would have confirmed the rank that he had prior to him leaving the service. Service. He did not lie about what it was. This is like a minor technicality bureaucrat thing. It has nothing to do. It's not meaningfully dishonest. Falsely claimed to have carried assault weapons in war. No, he just like trained in military combat for, you know, presumably decades. Like, so it's a weapon of war. He didn't see he was in the National Guard. He didn't see war. Again, like a mild technicality. Wrongly insinuated his family conceived using in vitro fertilization. No, it was a similar procedure. It wasn't exactly in vitro, but it refers to a process that falls within the broader category of, uh, of, of like medically assisted fertility and incorrectly stating he was in China during the 1989 Tiananmen Square pro-democracy protest. I'm sorry, it was 35 years ago you were you said you were there during the wrong month thank you msn.com uh, you know off of cnn thank you cnn thanks cnn that's great you know 
I mean, Donald Trump, like, Sieg Heil 57 times since I began reading this paragraph. And it, literally every single thing that he says is a lie. Like, not even exaggeration. Like, every empirical claim that he makes is factually provably wrong. He doesn't... If there's a thing that he wants to say and it's factually true, he doesn't say it. But no, you know, misremembering the date 35 years ago. Oh, well, thank you for clearing up the... They hate you and they want you dead. The media is complicit in... Tri if, if Trump wins, the media wanted it. Vosh, I can't find any We're Not Going Back merch on the official Kamala campaign site, but here we have an actual example of Hillary's consultancy through this merch design. Man, they really, really like to lose. They killed Hillary Clinton's campaign. They, they underperformed in the polling in 2020 with Joe Biden after he followed their advice, and now they're here to kill Kamala Harris's campaign. This is Hillary getting the uh, getting her revenge. If I can't be the first female president, no one can. True. Are po political consultancy firms incentivized to return Republican presidents? No, political uh, consultancy firms are just bad at their job. They're just bad. Literally, all of these firms that the Democrats work with, they are staffed by old fucking... Uh, trust me, I know. They are staffed by old motherfuckers who don't know how the world works anymore. They're basically, they're still trying to run the Clinton campaign. And pedophiles, and presumably a lot of them are pedophiles. You know, I have a great deal of contempt for people in positions of power. This is true. I mean, if that's the case, Kowalski, then the deal is like, yeah, you get you get the to you get the uncontested, you know, um, primary, but at the same time you have to lose the general. That's a pretty fucking bad deal. The consultants have to be against weird, and we're not going back because if it works, it shows how bad they are at their jobs. Literally, yeah. No, genuinely, like it could be as petty as that. We could legitimately lose the country. Uh, we could send the, the world into a dark age of, like, global American fascist influence, in part of because, like, a few dozen consultants who have worked with the Dems since, like, 1990 felt like they were being made irrelevant by the modern world, so they push back against it and insist that their shit-ass messaging take prominence over stuff that actually worked at the beginning of Kamala Harris's campaign. God, I'm getting so many 2016 flashbacks, I'm in pain. Keep in mind, this isn't that different from what Biden did. The reason it's bad now is because we went from, like, something that was doing pretty great to this over the, the course of two months, right? Like, Biden was always like this. Biden, from start to finish, was the chosen DNC candidate. So he started moderate, and he finished moderate, right? We didn't expect anything stellar from him after he won the 2020 primary. He goes up to the general pretty much as he was. We're not happy with it, but then he wins mm, marginally against Donald Trump. He does not win by as much as he should have. The problem with Kamala is that we saw a glimpse of greatness. Not, I shouldn't overstate the case, not greatness. We're not talking about a great campaign, certainly not a great woman, but better than what we're used to, better than Biden. And now all of the energy is gone because as soon as she was taken in by the DNC after winning the, you know, winning the primary, uh, she just became another DNC politician trademark. Yeah, we saw a glimpse of competency. And it's not a coincidence that Kamala Harris's campaign team had a lot of young people in it, whereas the Dem consultant groups don't. Does she have to listen to the consultancy groups or is this entirely her fault? I don't think she has much control over it now. I mean, how could she, right? She's, she's the candidate of the, of the Democrats. The Demo it's like the Democratic apparatus, you know? Like, she can speak out against it. She can speak in spite of it. But that doesn't, like, it, it, ultimately, it's like a big machine that she's a part of. There are limits to how much she as an individual can do within it. I'm just waiting for the big tell-alls from all of the people who worked with Kamala Harris from the beginning of her pull away from Biden when she announced her candidacy, who got shafted when they were taken over by the DNC. That's what I want to hear from, or those are the people I want to hear from. She still says we're not going back at her rallies. Yeah, but it, the overall like apparatus of the campaign doesn't engage with this anymore. You know, it's it's not the momentum is gone. There's no denying that. We can't we can't deny the fact that the momentum is gone. That is a fact of the world. You know. We're just trying to understand why.